In this video, I'll show you how to paint a Skitari Ranger for the Adeptus Mechanicus. So let's get going with this Skitari Ranger. So you can see I've primed him with Lead Belcher Spray. Now, if you haven't got Lead Belcher Spray, prime him black and then just paint Lead Belcher all over. And the reason I've done that is because there's a lot of metallics on the model. And we want to kind of get through this quite quick so we're going to have a lot of these in the army so what i'm going to do i'll take some null oil and i'm now just going to wash that all over all the metallic pieces um so this will give me a really good start on the model and don't forget you can get up to 20 percent off all the mechanicus skitari the new uh archaeopter uh, at Goblin Gaming, there's a link in the description. It does support the channel if you want to use that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Uh, I'm just really, really grateful because it helps me continue to do uh, what I do on the channel for you. So I'm just going to cover all the metallics with this null oil, and then when we come back, we'll uh, have a look at brightening it up. Next up, I just want to take some Necron compound and dry brush up some of that silver. You can see there it's giving a nice... Uh, a really nice effect. You want to make sure that the null oil is totally dry before you go throwing the Necron compound on there, otherwise what you're going to find is it's going to smudge. Take your time, be a little bit careful because there's lots of bits on the model, like you know the antenna and things like that, that it could snap if you're a little overly vigorous with it. So just work your way around until you get a nice little highlight on the silver like that, really quick. Uh, I'm using a makeup brush for it because I find them better than traditional dry brushes. I'll pop a link to these in the description as well because they're really cheap uh, and I find them really, really effective. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. We've got a little bit of shine back. You can see it reflecting on the lights there. So uh, next up, we'll have a little look at doing all the robes. I want to paint the inside of the robes first. The colour I'm using for this is Rakar Flesh. So just take your time around the bits that you may have already finished making sure that you don't get any uh, Rakar flesh on them. If it spills onto this side there, like that for example, that's fine. Uh, but just take your time. Uh, and there may be some bits that you struggle to get to uh, because of the shape of the model, and that's fine. So you've got between in the back of the legs, let me just tilt the model so you can see that. If you can't see the bit, then don't worry about getting paint on it. But I think that just just brightens it up a little bit in there for me. So do all the inside with Rakar Flesh. You may need a couple of coats and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do the outside next. Those two coats of Rakar Flesh have covered quite nicely. So we'll do the outside of the cloak next. So we're going to use Mephiston Red for this. And this is as simple as just popping it on. You can see there in some places it covers really nicely in other places not so much. So. What we'll do is we'll let it dry, we'll put a second coat on. Now in terms of where we want to be quite careful, it's on the edges here. Um, because we don't want it going over that rack of flesh we've already painted. So just take your time and uh, get that fist and red in there. One way you can take it right to the edge without going over is just move the brush along the edge of it there like that. Okay, so I'm going to get the rest of this robe covered in my fist and red. I'm going to do a second coat and we'll come back and uh, shade and highlight it. A nice two coats in my fist and red there. Um, and I've also gone back and just tidied up any uh, mistakes I made on the uh, on the rack half flesh. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shade down this uh, cloak with a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade. Now I found a little Purity Seal hide in there so I did that in Rakarth Flesh and I was going to put some uh, Agrax Earth Shade on that. So in terms of how I apply this, when it comes to the sleeves I'm going to apply the Agrax Earth Shade all over the sleeves um, and in the kind of the body here where we've got lots of folds I'm going to apply it all in there uh, like that. Now the reason I do that is because there's lots of folds, so there's going to be lots of detail. What I don't want to do on this cloak here is cover the entire thing in Agrax Earthshade. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to look for the folds around the backpack and around the kind of the belt area. And then we've got a little fold there, which I'm just going to run some Agrax into there just to give a little bit of shading. 
and just look around the model. I've got a little bit there as well, so I'm just going to run a little bit of Agrax into there. So I'm going to let that dry, see it, check I've got some nice shading in there, and then when we come back, we'll have a look at highlighting uh, all the red. Once that Agrax Earth shade is dry, we can just take a little bit of Mephiston red and just tidy up some of the some of the areas around where maybe the shade has overspilled a little bit. Again, this is a really straightforward thing. We're just looking on the arms here for those kind of most raised areas just to pop the, the Mephiston red back into so we get a bit of brightness back into the robes. And then we'll uh, we'll look to highlight them next. So just work your way around, pop that Mephiston red back into those uh, high points and the of the folds, and then we'll come back and we'll hopefully make it pop a little bit next. First highlight we're going to go for is Evil Sun Scarlet, and what we're doing here is we're looking for a bit like we did when we put the Mephiston back in. We're just looking for all the folds in the cloth. Uh, and we're just looking for them on the the highest areas, so we're not going to worry too much about going underneath. So here, where we've got this rifle kind of across the shoulder, we've got quite a lot of areas. And then also on the the main robes, what we'll find is we've got kind of lumps in them where the various parts of leg body are underneath so we just want to find those and we just want to pull some nice highlighted lines down through them we've got these sections here nice and simple just to give that differentiation in color and then when we've got the edges we just want to pull along there being careful again not to go over the the rack art flesh Okay, so work your way around the model, get those highlights done, and we'll pop another one in next. The last little highlight we want to go for on the red is just a little bit of Wild Rider Red. Now, we don't want to use too much of this. We just want to put this on the kind of the sharpest edges, so we've got the hood there. And this just keeps it red enough without it kind of looking too orangey. So again, what you're looking for is just you want to get this Wild Rider inside the Evil Sun Scarlet. So you want thin lines. So it's really important you've got a good point on your brush. Again, I'm still using Winsor Newton Series 7. As ever, there's a link in the description. Really good brushes, and I find they, they last a, a long time as well, even though they're, you know, they are a little pricey. So there we are, that's all the robes done. So what we're going to do now is we'll have a little look at some of the, the black elements next. So for the colours, or for the black areas, we're going to use a bad and black. Now we've got the trousers, so just take your time here and work it around the metallics that we've already finished. And obviously take your time when you come to the, to the cloaks the border of the cloak. Now you may find this covers okay in some areas, you may find that in other areas you need two coats and that's fine, there's no issue uh, with that. What we want to make sure we do uh, with the Abad and Black is we also do all some of the cables, so what I tend to do, any ribbed cables will be Abad and Black, so we've got plenty of them just a case of working your way around the model and finding them and taking your time. So there we are. I'm just going to carry on doing these the way that I've advised and then when we come back we'll, uh, we'll have a little look at highlighting it. We'll highlight that black with a little bit of Mechanicus Standard Grey and similar to what we have did with the the red, we're just looking for the folds that are going to catch that light. So again, nice and straightforward there. And for highlighting the kind of the ribbed cables, just wipe your brush off and just pull your brush along the the, the area. So what you're kind of doing is kind of like a dry brush really, but we're just using our normal brush for it to get those highlights. Nice and simple. 
So get all that done and then we'll come back. Once we've got all that Mechanica standard grade done, we're looking pretty good. So we can move on to uh, some of the other areas. Apologies if you heard my partner shouting at me. Uh, dinner was ready and uh, I'm not one to miss out on food, but let's get back to it. So we'll do the, the, the rifle next. And what we want for this is a dry bark. And we're just going to paint this all over uh, the rifle. You may need a couple of coats. Don't worry about the, the filler green going over that because we're going to give that a a bit of detailing in there when we move on to the next colour. Just be aware when you fill it in. So all the kind of bits that are going to be silver, make sure you leave those. So kind of all the mechanisms and things like that, leave that. Filigree is fine, but all the mechanisms we want to we want to leave them as they are. So just work your way all the way up. Might need two coats in some places, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll give it a little shade, and then we'll highlight it. And just while we've got the dryer bark out, one thing I forgot the um, the pack on the back is is covered uh, in a kind of like a leather casing, so we can just all these bits here just take our time and work that dryer bark over as well you need to go back in after and tidy up you can but just want to get that uh, brown as well if you're not sure which bits that it is or what you need to paint brown just have a look at the box art if you go on the games workshop website they've got 360 views that you can have a look at pretty good so we are get that finished, we'll come back and we'll shade it all down. Once that dried bark is dry, we want to take some Agrax Earth Shade and wash the wooden areas. And we also want to do the, the pack on the back as well. So take your time on this, don't spill it anywhere like I just did there. Wipe it away. Just give it a nice coating because this will just help the, the colour and pick out some of the detailing that's on the weapon and just add that little bit extra when it comes to to highlighting it in terms of giving us a more of an extreme light to dark which on little miniatures like this is what what we're looking for i guess so there we are let that dry and we'll come back and highlight it next once that agrax earth shades dry you're trying to highlight uh, the brown up we're going to do this using some gothel brown now what we can do on the weapon is we can just use the shape of it there. It's gone a bit thick to start, but we can go back in and repair that, that's fine. Just use the shape of the weapon and draw along those areas that are going to catch the light. And similarly on the the weapon butt there. And then we've got the back side. So it just makes the weapons stand out a little bit it's quite a nice quite a nice look and then when we finish off with the extra filigree uh, it'll look quite good and what we're going to do is the same kind of color gothel brown on the leather and we're just looking for the to catch the edges of everything if you want to put more detail on you can maybe go in and do some scratches and make the leather look uh, really distressed because I imagine that the that's how it would look on, on these models, if they were real, being out there. Obviously all the heat coming from this power pack. So there we are, that's all that brown highlighted up. We'll come back and we'll have a little look at adding that filigree, as well as some colour variation on the metallics next. colour I'm going to use for some variation is Balthazar Gold. Now I haven't uh, thinned this down too much at all, if, if anything. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out parts of the metallics. Um, to paint with Balthazar Gold. Now because I've not thinned it down, the real key thing for me to do is make sure I haven't got too much of it on my brush because I'd be in danger of it going on a bit too thick. So you can see there straight away it gives a nice variation in the colour. Um, you've got options then of various other bits like you've got this plate there that you can add a bit of variation on which I'm going to do because I think that actually looks quite nice and adds to the model. As this guy is the prime so use the Skatari Prime. I'm just gonna pull the brush and follow it along the, the armor design there, just to give him a little bit of variation on the normal troops. 
And then when it comes to this filigree on the weapon, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the brush along the design. So that you see it gives you a really nice, easy way of adding detail uh, to these weapons. Okay, so I'm just going to work my way around and we'll come back and uh, I don't think we need to shade it too much. I might put a little bit of null oil on this part here, a little bit on the mask, uh, but I'm not going to put too much on there and then I'll come back and we'll highlight it a little bit next. So to give that Balthazar gold a little bit of a highlight, we're going to take a little bit of Rune Lord brass and what we're going to do is we're going to just highlight. See, it's very light, the Rune Lord brass, but it just gives that little bit extra. So we're just looking for those kind of top levels or the parts that are kind of going to reflect the most light. So it's not going to be too much on the filigree parts. But all we're looking to do is just pop a little bit on there because when it, when it dries, it'll just give you that impression of a highlight. I also did the I was going to call it an exhaust. I don't think it's an exhaust. I think it's just, uh, I think that's probably you plug that into bits to charge the backpack, perhaps. Okay, so that's done. So the next thing we'll do, we'll do the, the cog on the front. And we'll also prep up all the kind of lenses and the eyes ready to get them done next. So the first thing we need to do is we need to prime, or prime, <laughs> paint that cog, get the white onto the cog. So we need Corax white for this. And you just want to fairly thin it covers quite well anyway you paint the whole of the cog uh, with the corax white just taking a bit of care to make sure that we don't uh, overspill and the other thing we want to do whilst we've got this corax white out is we want to paint all the lenses so there's quite a few lenses on this model and i also want to paint inside here as well with Corax white. Don't worry if you spill it out too much like I've done there. Uh, I'll show you why when we come to paint it in because for my money that's the the power. Now we've also got the the eyes as well so make sure you've got a good point on your brush. Just work that Corax white into there. You may need to go in and give it a second coat in some places. Just knock yourself out get in there and do that. Okay, and then we'll come back. We'll uh, we'll work on the cog again next. So when it comes to doing the cog, this half of the cog is black, and then this half of the skull is black. So because it's so small, you do need to be extra careful with this. Now you may make the decision to you know what, just I'm gonna leave that silver, and that's fine. All I'm gonna do is be really careful around the, the skull itself, because obviously that half of the skull is white. And then I just want to go in and my black's a little bit, it's not quite wet enough, uh, diluted enough, so it's not flowing off my brush the way I'd like it to. So I'm going to go and set that up um, with a bit more black, a bit more water, and I'll come back and show you this, the rest of this. Okay, so this is much better now. So this is flowing much better off my off my brush. So all I'm doing is drawing a line through the skull, and I'm colouring it in, being careful not to go over any of the white, just like that. And then what I'll do, is I'll go back in. I'll highlight that with uh, some Mechanicus Standard Grey off cam. And uh, what I'll do is show you how to highlight the white and the eyes next. So for highlighting the white, we're just going to take some white scar. My black had gone a little bit too far over the middle there, so that'll just put the skull back. I just want to paint those white bits, catch the edges of the cog going through there. And for the white, I'll show you on the backpack here. All we want to do is you want to fill the middle of these areas and similarly on the eyes as well just in the middle so use the point of your brush now we are to let that dry up and we'll do all the lenses next so you can paint 
everything whatever color color you want with the lenses but i'm going to give everything a uniform look so i'm going to take ethematic blue contrast paint it's a little bit too much on my brush to start with for the for the eye sockets don't want to drown the eye sockets but you just want to paint it in there now you can see straight away once it dries you get some nice glowing blue eyes um and then i'm going to do that for all the the areas and in particular remember I said it doesn't matter the blue over, uh, the white overspills here it's gonna paint that with the thematic blue like that and that gives you a nice when it dries and it'll give you a nice glow effect from the power pack itself so work your way around get all those bits done with the with the thematic blue so anything you've made white and uh, we'll come back we'll check the model over and we're pretty much done so we are very nearly done with this uh, Skitari Ranger. But on reflection, I felt, do you know what? We do need to make him pop a little bit more. So all I'm doing is I'm taking some chrome from Vallejo Model Air, and I'm just going to highlight these kind of uppermost areas of the metallics that kind of catch the light the most. Because I think this just will just give it that extra bit of shine. You can see that straight away. Uh, we'll do the same on the kind of... The armor plates, the top of the knee there. I'm not putting too much on at all, but it's just just enough to catch so that it it kind of gives an extra bit of pop. When it comes to some shapes, like on the weapon here, we can use the the, the antenna. We can use the shape of the model, like we do all the way through everything else. And you see now, actually, this is coming together much better. So I'm going to finish this. If you want, you can pop a transfer on that side. Um, and then this Skitari Ranger is done. So we'll have a look at him on the turntable next. So there we have it. This Skitari Ranger is done and ready for the table. I really hope this is an easy and straightforward way of painting your models. It means you can get them all done and on the table as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the channel. And make sure that you guys are getting the content you want to see. Don't forget you can get up to 20% from Goblin Gaming by using the link in the description. It does help me out just a little bit. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.